you have a few extra days to digest game one and get ready for game two. What's your take on the, the good, the bad, the ugly from your first look at this team? Our first, ga our first game? Um, well, it's typical of most first games. You know, you've, you kind of figure out some things you need to improve on coming out of camp uh, and game speed. And um, But, you know, overall, it was pretty solid. No turnovers on offense. Um, fortunately, no turnovers on defense either. Um, you know, so um, you have to emphasize getting the ball back and turning the ball over on defense. But I thought we were pretty safe with the ball. Um, had a few penalties that put us behind the sticks, you know, and, and put us in some situations where um, we can't do that. Um, but uh, overall, you know, pretty clean. Got just got to get rid of a couple of the penalties. And guys played hard, though. Played really hard. And, uh, you know, so that was encouraging. But there's just little things to fix here and there. Fundamentals, um, assignments, things like that that, uh, that we can improve on. We saw all those different combinations on the offensive line in every series early on as a different grouping. For this game, should we expect something different? Should we expect one unit for most of the time, or what should we what should we be looking for? No, I I, I think the I think we're pretty balanced there um, with our depth, and so to keep the guys fresh, um, you know, we could see you know some of the same thing going on with them, uh, especially on hot nights like that, you know. Um, try to keep guys hydrated and keep them fresh as much as possible. Uh, so um, as we go into the game plan here, you know, see how the week goes with health and everything else and, and take it from there. But uh, we feel good about some of our backups. There's not a lot of drop off between the one and the two. So, um, you know, and that's, that's nice to have. And really want, last week we wanted to get a lot of guys a chance to play and get the game speed for them. Uh, so, um, we'll just see how the game goes and progresses this week. Coach, I know you take every game week by week, but the Oregon uh, State Beavers have never won a game here in Fresno, California. And I think that 6-0 and record was being talked about in the Oregon papers in the lead up. Is that something that could be, you know, dangerous fuel for a team coming in here, or how do you kind of approach that? I, I assume so. I mean, we wouldn't approach it that way. Uh, you know, I think everybody's motivated by – um, the here and now type of thing. I mean, maybe they are. I can't tell you what they're motivated by. Um, you know, it, it won't. We won't use it as motivation for us. I mean, it's it's another game. It's a different season. Um, I don't even know when the last time they played here. You know, the early two thousands or something. I don't even know when was it. Oh three. Huh? Oh three. Okay, that's a long time ago. You know, some of our kids weren't even born then. <laughs> so um, you know, it's it's not something we're gonna. You know, we have enough to, to focus on without things like that that really make no difference to us. I mean, it's uh, we have to focus on our execution. Uh, Oregon State's a great football team, and uh, we're going to have to play our best to have a chance to win. And lastly, it's, it was not a normal week last week, you know, Thursday night kickoff. I'm, I'm assuming it's not normal this week with Labor Day. Just where are we at in terms of game preparation? And were you able to kind of utilize those extra days after the Thursday kick? We were. I, I think the rest was good for us, um, you know, but really, you know, was waiting to see Oregon State play, uh, you know, because you just had information from last year. So, um, but uh, we are a little bit ahead uh, for sure. And now it will turn into a normal week. We practiced yesterday, which we normally don't, a little bit longer. We normally don't do that on a Sunday. Um, you know, but today's their normal day off for the week, and then we'll get into normal game plan stuff Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Coach, on that uh, Oregon State-Boise State game from Saturday night, you got a little advanced scouting on Boise State, but what did you see from the Beavers forcing five turnovers and basically prompting the quarterback change in the first half? Yeah, um, they're a great football team, like I just mentioned, um, all the way around. Uh, offensively, they're very balanced. Uh, they can run it really well. I don't know. I think they had close to 500 yards and really like 250 rushing and and or no 250 passing and almost 200 yards rushing, um, you know, and then some other things in there. Um, but um, very balanced, very physical, very well coached defensively to come up with five turnovers. Um, you know, they really fly around. They play hard. 
Uh, their schemes are very solid. They play fast. And, uh, you know, so just a great coach football team with a lot of ability on it. And they have a they have a three-way player, right? Jack Coletto. I mean, he was playing, it seemed like, every snap. Um, it, how unusual was that in college football, and what challenges does he present to you guys? Yeah, it is unusual. Um, but, yes, he's he's done that for a while now, not only – to play linebacker, but he plays fullback for them and does a really nice job. He had like a 43-yard touchdown run. Um, plays on special teams. Uh, you know, he's he's a big physical player who, you know, it, more than anything, I think on that is uh, the intelligence it takes to play on both sides of the ball to understand what you're doing and the schemes that they're running, uh, offensively and defensively. You know, so it's pretty impressive for a guy to do that. Jonathan Smith has been there for five years, but before that he was at Washington the same time that you were there as, a, as an analyst. How well do you know him? What's your relationship like with him? And what type of a coach do you think he is? Yeah, I know him really well. Uh, he's a great coach and uh, really enjoyed my year there um, with him and, and watching him work at Washington. He did a great job there. And, um, you know, so familiar with a couple of their coaches, the offensive line coach there was our offensive line coach at Cal for, for many, many years and an excellent coach. Um, you know, just, just guys that I know are really, uh, they're good people, but they're excellent coaches. And they're very solid in what they do in their preparation. So um, familiar with who they are, you know, as far as, as people. Uh, that doesn't go a long way with, you know, what goes on between the lines. In terms of your team, Coach, there were a lot of new guys that got kind of worked into the mix on uh, Thursday night. I think 15 new faces played, uh, played played for the Bulldogs. Anybody that stood out to you? Anybody that pleasantly surprised you on the field with their production, with their work ethic, chemistry, et cetera? Uh, not really. I, th I think Gabriel Lightfoot in their you know, defensive tackle to play for his first game as a true freshman. Um, you know, he can improve a lot, but I think to get his feet wet in game – situations and, and the speed of the game uh, you know I thought anytime you play like that you know you're gonna learn a lot you're gonna learn the speed of the game you're gonna and each week I just think he's gonna improve but um, for him to for him to play his very first game uh, I thought he did a admirable job um, like I said a lot he could improve on but to be in there under the lights you know the first game of your college career you know I thought was pretty impressive People always want to focus on the skill position guys because that's what gets the crowd excited. Uh, Nico Romico had a terrific game in, a, in his Bulldog debut, obviously using him on kickoffs and punts in addition to at the backfield, you know, slot, all that stuff. Um, how do you plan to use him this season? And is he somebody that can even take his game to another level? Yeah, N Nico's a, a really good player. He's very versatile. And, you know, so he, he can do a lot of things. And, you know, we'll just take it one week at a time and see how it, it fits against the schemes that we're playing against and, uh, you know, take it from there. He's, he's a very hard worker, uh, but he's got a lot of skill and he's tough and intelligent. So, um, you know, he, he can bring a lot to the table and then on special teams as well. You know, he's been returning for a long time when he was at Cal. He was a like an all-conference returner there. So um, he's, he's used to doing that as well. Was your plan to have him back there on both kickoffs and punts? Because I think last week in the two deep, uh, Eric Brooks was listed as the starter on kicks. Yeah, yeah, that was the plan. It, it, you know, that opening game uh, depth chart, it can go either way, you know, leading up to the game. And, you know, so we, we put that depth chart out really early. And so we still had like a week to practice uh, before that. So, uh, but yeah, it's he's one of our returners. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about Jake. And obviously, his, you know, statistically, he passed for 377 yards and two touchdowns. He did have those two throws that I'm sure that he's glad that it didn't go the other way. Uh, what did you think about Jake's game in general and where he is in his progression? Jake played well. I mean, it, um, you know, one time they ran a robber and broke on the ball and, and ran into each other. The other one wasn't a very good decision. He was scrambling, just tried to underhand the ball. To somebody, and really, that's that's about it. Um, but for the most part, he played within himself. He got the ball. He didn't take a lot of chances with the ball, um, which is good. Uh, he didn't force a ton of balls, um, you know. So I thought he played very solid. You know, it's you know the stats were were very good, but I think he was very efficient. A lot of those throws that look like they're easy throws are not always that easy, you know. And so 
thought he he ran the offense well. And like I said, we didn't turn the football over, didn't have a delay game penalty, all that stuff. So uh, he managed the offense well. Morning, Coach. Morning. Did you guys get through the game healthy or as close to healthy as you can be? Yeah, yeah. You know, normal game stuff, you know, just bumps and bruises and dings here and there. But uh, nothing nothing major that should hold anybody out for any period, length of time. You watch teams on Saturday, maybe some California teams, and I noticed there's a lot of California stadiums that weren't as full as Valley Children's on Thursday. Did you have any thoughts on how the Red Wave turned out as opposed to other California schools? Yeah, you know, I don't really compare us against other schools. Um, but I was very pleased on a Thursday, for a Thursday, for the fans to come out like they did. It was very impressive and very appreciative of that. I was a little concerned during the day when normally I look out my window and the parking lot's full, and, um, and it wasn't. And then I had to remember, oh, today, remind myself, today's a Thursday. People are still at work, you know. And so I, I kind of talked to the team a little bit about that of, Hey, you know, because I had no idea what it was going to look like when we went out there. Yet we had to bring our own energy. We couldn't rely on the fans necessarily, just because of what the parking lot looked like. But then it filled up fast, and uh, always very appreciative of of the fans and the stadium. And we're going to need them this week for sure. This is this is, you know, we have to use it to our advantage, our home field advantage. And so hopefully, um, we can get everybody out and make a lot of noise. It's a big game for so many reasons. So many things on the table, on the football field, on the football field, and off of it. Do your guys get extra hype, extra motivation for playing a Pac-12 school, given the current state of the program and where they can be? I don't know what you mean by the current state of the program. Um, I just meant like the opportunity to potentially play in the Pac-12, playing a Pac-12 opponent. Oh yeah, that, that, yeah, that's that's not our players' concern. You know, it's really not. We only kind of concentrate on things we can control. And so, you know, we're not going to put the pressures on the team about all that stuff. We just got to play football. And, you know, each week's a big week. Uh, each and every game, you have to play your best. Obviously, with the team, you know, we have respect for all of our opponents. And, uh, you know, um, Oregon State proved that they're very worthy of all that respect. Um, they really did a nice job against Boise, which is not easy to do. We know what kind of program Boise has as well. And, uh, you know, so. Uh, we have a lot of respect for Oregon State and know what kind of preparation we're going to need this week to be able to have an opportunity to win the game. Uh, speaking of that Boise game, did you watch it live? And is there any added benefit to watching your next opponent as it happens compared to your normal film routine? I did watch it live. Um, but no, it, it's there's nothing like film. You know, um, it's... You come back, you get to rewind it and look at it because you can't see everything, you know, on on uh, on TV. You know, sometimes they don't show the secondary, you know, so you can't really analyze it or evaluate it like you can with film, right? So, uh, really, it was just kind of see who was playing and and you know what their personnel looked like and things like that. And you know, they're they're a great football team. You know, play, the quarterback played excellent. You know, and they're. They do a great job up front, um, running the football, protecting the passer. He was very accurate with his throws, um, you know. So, just some of that, you you know, I was really looking at personnel and seeing who was playing for him on TV, and then analyzed it obviously deeper when I got to work the next day. Oregon State's tight end, uh, Musgrave, also had a pretty good game. Um, just what were your thoughts on him and the fact that your team's seeing some pretty high quality tight ends in practice? Every yeah, you know, it's. I just looked at it again this morning, and he's one of the best tight ends I've seen in a long, long time. You know, he's he can block at the point of attack. He's not just a receiving tight end, but he can run, he can catch. Uh, he can create some mismatches, you know, because he can run so well. And he's, he's tall, he's lanky, he's got range. Uh, you know, he's not just your control guy you're going to throw little option routes to. He gets down the field. Uh, he's really good at the top of his routes of being able to make moves and get in and out of his breaks well. Um, he's a he's an excellent tight end. I, I would assume, I would anticipate he's going to play on Sunday somewhere. Uh, it took a little while for the Broncos to accumulate their points. Just what do you notice about the Beavers' defense and uh, what you're going to be going up against there? Yeah, they're solid all the way around. They play really, really hard. They run to the ball. Um, five turnovers. Uh, it's a lot of turnovers. And so 
they're very athletic in the secondary, great cover guys, uh, play up hard up front, they're athletic, um, you know, so um, all, the, all the way around, you know, you look at their whole, their whole team on both sides of the ball, I, I, they're an excellent football <laughs> team. You know, it's not easy, you know, Boise is a very good football program, as I mentioned, and um, for that to happen, whatever it was, I don't even know, 24 nothing or somewhere in that range, 21 nothing in that range for, for a little bit. Um, you know, and they dropped the deep ball. Oregon State dropped the deep ball. It should have been a touchdown early in the game. So um, they're, they're very solid, very solid program. Uh, you mentioned that it was a long time ago, but when Oregon State did come here in 2001, that was an all-time memory for a lot of Bulldog fans. I was curious, uh, I believe you were with Oregon at the time at a big game against Wisconsin that weekend. If you had any recollection of when you saw or heard that the Bulldogs won that game and that your little post came down. I don't, you know, I don't, there's been a lot of games between them and that time and now. <laughs> um, so no, not really. Um, I, I actually saw something on TV last night of the goalpost coming down, which is you know, that's good and bad. You don't want to tear your goalpost down. We did that a few times at Cal, and it can hurt somebody when the goalpost falls on their head. So you don't, you know, but it would look exciting for sure, you know, and any time you can have a great win like that, it boosts the program. It's just so long ago, though, you know. I mean, I'm sure it was, it was awesome for the program at that time and, and probably lasted for a long time. Um, but, you know, it's amazing to me, you know, how – I guess how old I am. I was going to say how young the kids are, but how old I am. You know, you say, do you remember this? And they don't remember a lot of things, you know. And back in 2001, what's that, 21 years ago, um, some of our kids weren't even born then, you know. So it, uh, we just got to play in, in right now, you know. It'd be awesome to, to be able to, to win this football game, no doubt about it. We've worked very hard to have this opportunity, but so have they, you know, and so it's, it's going to be a great matchup. And uh, lastly for me, I'm sure, as mentioned, it's probably not on the, the top of your mind, but college football potentially going to a 12-team playoff, what do you think that means for Fresno State and the Mountain West moving forward? <clears throat> I have no idea. <clears throat> I, I think the landscape of college football is so up in the air right now that who knows from week to week, month to month, you know, what's happening. I've you know, when the USC UCLA thing happened, it just, I think it just, you know, opened the floodgates. And so I have no idea. You know, I think going to 12 teams, I think that's great, though. I really do. I think there's a lot of people who deserve a chance at it. You know, instead of just four teams, I think 12 teams is, is a good move. Um, you know, so, uh, but how it all plays out, really, to tell you the truth, I just saw the headlines of it. I didn't get deep into, you know, Who's doing what? Who you know? That's that's nothing right now that you know I'm I'm really concentrating on. It's more about just trying to make first downs against Oregon State. Any more questions for Coach? All right. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Pretty good. It was good to get back out there. It was kind of, it wasn't surreal. It was just like, wow, another season's here. So uh, it was great to be out there, see the fans, uh, get some you know game reps under our belt again, and get ready to go for this week. And I know sometimes you're your, your harshest critic in reviewing film, but with only six incompletions out of 42 passes, what, what were the things you saw that said, hey, I can do that better? Yeah, I I thought it was an okay um, game on my end. I thought I could have done a few things better as far as you know where my eyes were going to be um, protection wise. I think there were some things that you know we needed to do a little better um, as far as my communication and just giving the offensive line a better chance to be successful on some you know situations. A couple of those sacks were on me. Um, so as far as that, I just you know harsh on myself and. 
and look what I can improve on. And I think Kirby and, and Coach Teddy, uh, you know, looked at the film and we talked about it and gave myself a grade. And um, we're going to try to correct those this week. We just asked Coach Tepper about some of the history between Fresno State and Oregon State. He said a lot of the players might not have been born the last time the Beavers came to town. I was alive. I was alive. <laughs> I was. I think I was four. It was 16, 14, 2003. Is that right? Well, are you aware of some of the history and some of the big moments between these two programs? 2001, I remember, too. Um, all I know is right now they're 0-6 in Fresno, so we got to try to get it to 0-7. Um, but other than, you know, 2000s, I'm not really aware. Uh, how big a factor did you see from the other sidelines? The heat for Cal Poly coming to town. I know we talked a lot about the Bulldog weather you guys practice in, but this is another team coming here that, mm -hmm. that might not be used to the 100-degree temps. I know how I felt during the game, and it was really hot down there. So people who haven't been experiencing it, haven't been around it, I could only imagine what it's like coming and trying to plan it for the first time. Uh, it's going to be 115 this week, and that is unbelievable. But uh, I think I saw game temp, it's going to be around 103 or something like that, 102. Uh, so, I mean, it's our advantage, man. We, we, we are used to it. We've played in it. We practice in it. And it's definitely something that, you know, is an advantage for us. So I'm excited to see how the Beavs handle it. And I know we're going to, you know, do our thing and just kind of see what happens. It's another big number with uh, the attendance and it's kind of trending towards a sellout right now. Are there any lessons learned from you or from this team from the last time that there was a sellout outside of the children? I just think the last, last time it was just kind of a, I mean, it's a new season, and there's new ex new expectations, new experiences, and I think you know this team is mature. They're ready to handle those big moments. Uh, we've been in those big moments, and I think you know through the ups and the downs, I think we've grown and we've learned um, from the wins and the losses. And I think this Saturday is going to be no different. It's just going to be another big game and some that we uh, you know we thrive in. And I'm excited for the challenge. They're they're a good team. Their defense does a lot of really good things. They play a lot of man coverage. They're going to challenge us on the perimeter. Um, they're going to basically just tell us to tell us to beat them, throw them the ball. So, we'll see what happens. Jake, we've been asking you for months about Nico, and now we finally got to see him on the field. Fans got to see him. Um, what does he bring to this offense, and how would you assess your chemistry with him right off the bat uh, in a game situation? Do you guys think it looked pretty good? I thought it felt pretty good. I mean, uh, just having him here. He's a, he's a veteran dude. He's played in big games. He's won some big games and played in a, in, a, in a really good conference and I just think that uh, having Nico here is is great to have him on the sideline I think you know, just his mature presence on the sideline was great to have and then obviously having him on the field uh, he does a lot of different things and just allows us to utilize him and then other people in, in different scenarios it's hard to guard us it's hard to defend us and I think you know teams like Oregon State are going to try to man up against us and see how they see how they fare so um, you know, after this week, I think it will be a really good indicator of where we're at on offense and how our receivers are going to be uh, be compared and, and put up on a, on a big stage. So though, those DBs are long. They're 6'2", 6'3", and they got long arms and they're physical and, and they're not scared to challenge you. So I think it's going to be a great challenge for those guys. And Nico is all about it. He came up to me yesterday and said, dude, I cannot wait to get on the field on Saturday. It's going to be an awesome challenge. And that's just the, the kind of competitor he is. He's ready for it and he wants it. Well, both of you, and there are several other guys on the team too, who are uh, transfers from the Pac-12. Mm -hmm. So does it mean something to you to now have two consecutive games in a row against the Pac-12? I mean, you're testing yourself against the best teams in college football. Yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I prepare the same way every week. So uh, if it's against Oregon State, it's against Alabama, whoever it is, I'm going to prepare the same way. Uh, and, you know, all my focus is on these guys right now and, and what they're going to try to do to attack our offense. And um, obviously, yeah, I mean, it means a lot to us being able to have a Pac-12 team coming to Fresno and a team that's on the upward trend in Oregon State and who has a really good coach, Jonathan Smith, who recruited me at Washington, was my offensive coordinator at Washington um, my first year there. So I have some pretty good ties with him, good respect for him, and he's done a great job at Oregon State, and I'm just excited to see uh, what they have in store for us on Saturday.
Yeah, speaking specifically about Jonathan Smith, do you remember that first conversation you had with him? I assume it was in your, your living room, right, with, with your family? He's been in my living room, yeah. Uh, he was at my last high school game with Coach Peterson uh, in December of 2016, watching me play against Najee Harris in Antioch. Uh, we got after him a little bit, so that was fun. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of crazy how life comes full, full circle, just – him recruiting me to UW, taking the job, Teddy over there, and then just how it's all happened, and now he's coming to our place uh, to play the dogs. So I remember the last time he was here, what happened. So we'll, we'll see what happens uh, on Saturday. What did you think when you were watching that Oregon State-Boise State game and how, uh, obviously, Oregon State was able to knock out Boise State starting quarterback in the first half, their five turnovers. What did you think about that game on Saturday? Um, I just think it shows how well coached they are uh, and – how well they play together. They're a veteran group on the back end. They play really, really hard with crazy, crazy effort, and they're very aggressive on defense. So, um, you know, I think they do a really good job, and they got some guys that have been there six, seven years, and uh, you can tell. I mean, they play like it. They're passing things off. They're doing a really good job communicating uh, in the back end. And like I said, it's, it's probably going to be one of the biggest challenges for us all year. So uh, I'm ready for it, man. This is what you work for. It's what you prepare for. And, I think uh, I think our team's ready for the challenge. When Coach was in here a few minutes ago, um, he was talking about the offensive line, different combinations, all the depth. What do you see when, when you're back there? And are you comfortable with uh, whichever number is lining up in front of you? Um, you know, when I'm in, I'm just trusting the five that are in. So I'm trying to go through my progressions, go through my reads, see my keys, and uh, trust what I'm seeing on tape. And um, you know, whoever's up there, I'm trusting to give me the time to throw the ball down the field. And I feel like if you're trying to worry about who's in the game at that specific point in time, you're, you're wasting your energy on things you, you can't control. So uh, those guys work really hard. They prepare really hard, and they do a really good job um, in the weight room, on the field. And, and their preparation this offseason has been great. So uh, whoever's out there, whatever five are out there, I'm going to trust and do my best to make plays. I know you kind of mentioned it earlier with all the playmakers you have on the team. Uh, you completed a uh, pass to nine different guys. You know, as much as Nico and Jalen got, you know, the attention, you know, Jordan, Mims had a touchdown reception, Raymond Powell had one. So when you have all those weapons as a quarterback, you know, like you said, if they try to man you guys up, you have so many weapons. What's that like to be a quarterback with that many weapons and that many guys you can catch a pass? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely nice to – have a bunch of different different outlets. I think people saw with, with Cal Poly, they tried to double crop a few times and play cloud on the boundary and do some different things and and change the picture on us a few times and just play from depth. I think one thing that they really tried to do was say, hey, you guys are going to check the ball down. We're going to make the quarterback be patient, take what's there, and uh, you know methodically move it down the field. I don't think they really allowed us to take any shots. I don't think you guys saw us really take any shots. Um, because of how deep and how soft they were playing. So um, this week's going to be a little different, I think. And they got some athletes that are going to be able to match our athletes. And uh, we're just going to play some ball, man. That's what it comes down to. The, the competitors are going to show, and they're going to rise. And uh, I'm just going to do everything I can to get those guys as prepared as possible and myself as prepared as possible and uh, line it up on Saturday. I can't even hear you anyway with the mic. Does it even work? Gotcha, gotcha. But uh, you said it looked good, or it felt good. It looked good watching you and Nico uh, connect so many times on Thursday. But when did that process start? Because it, it didn't just start that Thursday night. It started when you guys first connected. So when was that moment when he committed to Fresno State and you guys started talking about letting yeah. this happen? Yeah, um, well, I took him out on his official. So we were kind of hanging out on his official, and I met him. First time I met him was probably two years ago when I first, three years ago, when I first started going down to Orange County and training down there uh, during my break in the summer for a month. And he was kind of down at the same training facility that I was at. And we kind of met, introduced ourselves, and lo and behold, he's my roommate now. And um, he's going to do some good stuff for us this year. But I think in January when he, when he came in and um, he was asking, you know, who I was living with. I, I currently didn't have a, a roommate, and he was needing somewhere to stay. So I offered him, you know, I was like, hey, dude, you want to you can stay with me? No big deal. And I just think, you know, our relationship kind of took off from there. And, and just the way he works is, is like a pro. And, you know, 
one game, one game, well, it's just been one game, so there's a long way to go. Uh, but I think the preparation that he's put in is, is given him the opportunity to be successful, and I think it's going to carry over for the remaining you know, parts of the season. So, you know, it, it doesn't happen in one night, but I, I think this, this off season we put in a ton of work together, and it's going to continue to show. And good point. Just one game, I mean, you might see Moreno Crawford blow up on this week, or maybe Kelly the next week. So is that what you kind of expect from this receiver group that has three bona fide one guys all on the same roster? I think Zane Pope could deserve and Eric Brooks. I mean, those guys all deserve to be uh, in the mix. I, I think they all do a really good job, and I have a ton of confidence in, in all of them. And I think one thing, you know, with this deep of a receiver room, you can't make everybody happy. There's one football, and um, I got to do the best job I can to make, you know, all those guys successful. So uh, if I distribute the ball and give them three, four, five, six catches here, and the other guy five catches here, um, you know, there might be one guy that jumps out on tape one week, you know, and, and I think he, that showed last year. Some days there's Jalen with four or five touchdowns, some Zane with two or three, and I just think, you know, you got to do your best as a quarterback to feed the hot hand, and when, when that guy's eating, you got to give him the rock. So I think that's my job to be a, a, a good facilitator and a good quarterback and get, get those guys the ball. And last question from EJ. So this will be the third Pac-12 team you face in two years, and then Next week, you'll have the fourth Pac-12 team you face in two years. Is there, and Andrew kind of mentioned this, is there kind of like a, a rivalry between Fresno State and the Pac-12 and what you guys are trying to do as a statement against the conference every time you play one of their teams? I mean, every time we go on the field, we're trying to win the football game. Uh, so I, I would say that, you know, like I said earlier, I prepare the same every week, and everything I do is for the program, for the team, for my teammates, and, and uh, I just want to do everything I can to be as prepared as possible come Saturdays. and. You know, whenever you're playing a big time team, a big program from Power Five school, like, yeah, you get excited for it. But I love playing football, so I get excited every time I get to go out there. And I don't take this for granted. I, this has been a great opportunity for me to come here and be at this program. And um, every time I step on that field this senior year, I, I just think how, how grateful I am to be playing this game and be playing here. And uh, yeah, so I, I don't really look at it like a Power Five, Fresno State kind of rivalry. I just think of yeah, it's the next opponent. I'm grateful to be out here playing against a really good team. Jake, you name dropped some uh, Bay Area names earlier. I'm curious if you've crossed paths with Rajon Wright or Alton Julian before this game. I actually have not. I don't know. Um, I don't know them. I know that they're they're good players though, and uh, they're going to give us give us some challenges and. Yeah, I, I just I haven't met those two guys, but I know they're really good players. Any more questions for Jake? All right, covered it all. Thank you. Thanks, Jake. Thank you. Thank you, guys.